Uh, within the last year, were you asked, asked to review uh, records pertaining to an autopsy that was performed here in St. August, named by the medical examiner's office here, uh, pertaining to a young female by the name of Tracy Bailey? I was, yes, sir. And um, did you um, review a PowerPoint presentation that relates to information from, those, from the autopsy records that you reviewed? Yes, sir. And did that um, presentation contain autopsy photos and other information that was relevant to Yes, sir. Ron, I believe there's a foundation of objection. Uh, so at this time, I offer safety to the eye into evidence. Response? No objection. Oh, all right. That'll be received into evidence as it is over the exhibit. Yeah, yeah published state tonight for our UA. Dr. Bolger, uh, when did the autopsy of Tristan Bailey take place? The autopsy took place 5 10 2021 at 9.30 hours at the Office of the Medical Examiner in St. John's County. And who performed that autopsy? Dr. Bulick. And as I think all of us know here, Doctor, you were asked to review this because Dr. Bulick passed away last year, right? Yes, Dr. Bulick died in the summer, and my office took over some uh, autopsy responsibilities and also testimony responsibilities for his cases. Um, can you tell us um, what materials did you review in the case? I reviewed autopsy photos, x-rays, a medical examiner's report, the investigator report of the medical examiner, and then the actual autopsy report itself. And after reviewing those materials, were you able to reach your own independent conclusions concerning the cause, manner, and Yes. What was your understanding of how old Tristan Bailey was at the time of her death? 13 years of age. In your review of the, um, of the records and photos, did you observe any injuries to the body of Tristan Bailey at the time of her autopsy? Yes, there are significant injuries to the body of uh, Mrs. Bailey. We have 114 separate sharp force injuries a combination of incised and stab wounds overlying many body surface areas. And were those, um, were those sharp force injuries um, they identified in autopsy reports as sort of being um, categorized in certain locations of her body? Yes, the autopsy report is very well organized and uh, discrete areas of injury are noted and well documented photographically. In terms of her head and neck, how many wounds did uh, Tristan Bailey suffer? There are 35 wounds, stab <laughs> wounds and incised wounds, to the total of the head and neck region. Right. And were there any um, objects that were removed from her body in that area at the time of her autopsy? Yes, there was a triangular gray metal fragment removed from uh, the scalp underlying one of the wounds. And in terms of her, um, her upper back and shoulder areas, There are 14 on the upper back and shoulders, 12 on the mid back, and then three to the right lower back, right flank. Um, where's there evidence that Tristan Bailey had um, suffered defensive injuries? Yes, there is. And how many and where were those injuries located? Uh, largely on the right arm and hand, 22 on the back of the right hand, wrist and forearm, 17 on the front of the right arm, and then Ten on the left arm, scattered more on the left. And why are those um, those types of injuries referred to by yourself and other um, pathologists as um, defensive injuries? They're commonly seen in individuals as they're being stabbed or injured in an attempt to ward off the blade, protecting their torso, main body core, with an extremity. This is a slide of the body bag with a uniquely numbered red tag through the double zippers securing the body as it was transported. This will be cut as soon as we, the medical examiner gets in the building, obviously, in the autopsy suite. And I'm going to go through these relatively quickly, uh, but, and just really just to kind of show the courts on his main decision, sort of the types of injuries that um, Bailey had suffered. 
Yes, sir. Um, um, slide B, C, and D. Can you tell us what those photos represent? Those are overall photos as the body is cleaned. It's lying on the stainless table. The body's been largely washed. There's a bit of debris in the hair, but largely that body is, uh, as it's presented, cleaned up a little bit. And then we have multiple stab wounds, which are best illustrated in additional up-close photographs. Those are abrasions to the anterior surfaces of the knees and contusions as well. Now moving here, so we've discussed generally the head and neck injuries. Um, can you go um, here to state 9G? Can you tell us what we're looking at in that photograph? Yes, this is the right side of the head. The head has been shaved to best show the injuries. That is, all hair is removed from the scalp. And we have a conglomeration of 11 injuries, numbers, and every injury is numbered, every stab wound and incised wound is numbered, numbers 23 to 33. And were there um, any associated injuries to the skull area of Tristan Bailey underneath the ones that are obvious here? Yes, uh, some of the larger incised wounds show incised scored marks on the bone, on the outer table of the skull, and we also have chipped out lesions of the uh, posterior vertex or the back of the head as the tip of the knife impacts the skull. Those are best illustrated in other photos though. Stage 9H, what is what we're looking at here? 9H is a up close photo of wound numbered 31 which is one of the longer incised wounds. It shows a fishtail appearance at the posterior aspect indicating to me that the blade was inserted in the skin and then twisted or repositioned at the posterior aspect of that wound, giving that appearance. And that would be a sort of looking at the way we're looking at the bottom of that photograph? Yes, uh, if the uh, court looks at wound number 32, the fishtail is directly above that right there. Yes, sir, that's it. It's just a pattern of injury because it looks like a fishtail. Moving to states 9i, um, what is this, where is this located, and um, how many injuries, what, what type of injuries and how many are there? Sure. This is the grouping of 10 stab and incised wounds behind and above the right ear. These are numbered 82, I'm sorry, 72 to 81 in the autopsy report. The more short wounds are stab wounds, and the longer wounds, for example, wounds 74 are incised wounds. Definitionally, that means the wound is longer than it is deep to be an incised wound, deeper than it is long to be a stab wound. Moving here to state 9 So, because there were so many wounds on this area, the original pathologist was unable to fit enough numbered placards in the picture, so they removed all the pick placards and then repositioned an additional two placards to show the additional injuries. In the first photograph, all the placards covered up these wounds. Correct. Separate photographs you can see. Correct. They needed two photos to show all the wounds in this particular site. You mean here to say 9J, what section of the body is? This is scalp and neck. We have nine wounds, numbers 82 to 90. We see this goes up to 85, so A and L, those include the other stab or incised wounds? Yes, these are all stab wounds to the scalp and back of neck. A total of nine, 82 to 90 on the back and neck scalp. The reason three photographs were taken is because they're presented across the neck laterally and then medially, so different angles were used to best illustrate them. Moving 
here to stage 9M. Yes. What is this? This is the back of the scalp. It shows multiple wounds, but of interest, wound number 34, which also has a fishtail appearance and has a portion of rounded protruded fat through an additional, or adipose tissue, through an additional associated injury. All right, now I'm going to take you through. And there were, the, the, the slide indicates a total of five wounds. Those are not all pictured in this one photograph, is that correct? They are not. Because of the curvature of the head, multiple photographs are required to document all wounds appropriately. more of those five, is that correct? Yes. What type of injury is this? Uh, so we have 34 as a stab wound and 36 is going to be an incised wound because it is longer than it is deep. Stage 9 oh. 38, now we're on the far left hand side of the head and we have an additional incised wound on the scalp. Stage 9P, this is essentially the same photograph we saw before. Yes, 34 is, uh, corresponds to one of the chipped out regions of bone. Space 9Q, what is this photograph of? We're looking under 34, lateral and slightly medial, and we see the prosector, Dr. Bulick, holding, uh, most likely him, him or an autopsy tech, holding plastic forceps, removing a triangular fragment of metal that's deeply embedded into the tissues of the scalp adjacent to wound 34. And did that show up in an x-ray? It did, yes sir. And the 9R nine is simply a picture of the fragment after it's been removed? Yes, a photograph with scale of the fragment. And the 9S? 9S is the anti-mortem before, I'm sorry, post-mortem before the body is cleaned up. Photograph, you can see uh, jewelry and whatnot on the neck but it also shows the triangular fragment embedded in the scalp at the back of the skull and braces. So go back to stage 9B. Mm -hmm. Where exactly was the metal? The metal fragment is located approximately a centimeter and a half to two centimeters medial towards midline, so towards <laughs> the one centimeter, yeah, right above like, go above the one, right there, there you go, that's about it. If one looks at that photo, they can see the punched out portion of fat uh, in Q as it's reflected down. The fat is directly adjacent to the, um, the incised wound that was made by the autopsy technician when they reflected the scalp back to get that fragment. That helps her orientation. T shows the scalp uh, as the skin is reflected. We have incised wounds to the right aspect across the frontal and parietal bone. That corresponds to that longer wound that we saw previously. And then importantly, we have two chipped out lesions, one at the top of the head uh, near midline and then one on midline posteriorly. Uh, the one on midline posteriorly corresponds to 34 and that's where the fragment was found, at or near that area. Here. Those are also incised score lines. Some of those incised wounds are deep to the scalp and uh, the skull, actually scoring the skull. Say U. U shows a punched out lesion uh, or injury to the right, uh, I'm sorry, the left uh, frontal bone. And uh, that wound penetrates into the skull and actually pierces the inner table of the skull slightly. Do we see that in stage 9B? Yes, in V we're looking at the inside of the skull cap as it's removed and we see the punched out lesion. How much is, does it take quite a bit of force to be able to see that? Yes, it's a significant amount of force to uh, drive a knife through a, a skull, yes, yes sir. <coughs> Moving to the upper back and shoulders, starting with the overall back um, that we see here in states 9W. Yes, W is an overall picture of the back and shoulders. <clears throat> now for the upper back and shoulders, um, moving here to states 9X, what section of the body, what type of injuries are there, and how many? 
So we're looking at the left shoulder. Uh, one is looking at the top of the shoulder. We have five wounds, number numbers 39 to 43. I'm sorry, we have six. It might be five in that picture. There's a total of six on the autopsy report, 39 to uh, 43. Why. Oh, he has a, he, I know why. He has an additional one of uh, 3093 uh, that's in that group that's not seen in that picture. My apologies. Uh, say 9, why? Uh, here we're on the right shoulder again. We have wounds numbers 95 and 98. Uh, they're located uh, 95 more medial towards the neck, and 98 is more lateral on the shoulder. So those were not well illustrated in the previous photograph. And 9Z? 9Z is the upper back going tor towards midline or the posterior neck. We have four stab wounds, 92, 96, 97, 99, and then two incised wounds, 91 and 94. That's a total of six? Yes, sir. Sharp force injuries? Sharp force injuries, yes, sir. Six sharp force injuries, four stab wounds, two incised wounds. And I want to talk about the middle back. So we're moving to state nine double A. How many injuries here, what type, and what location? On the mid back, we have a cluster of six stab wounds, numbers 103 to 108. The picture is taken oriented from the posterior left side looking towards the midline of the back. All stab wounds. Did any of these um, actually penetrate into the chest cavity? Yes, three do. Stab wounds 103, mm -hmm. 106, and 108 penetrate into the chest cavity on the left side. You see 106 here, the circle? Yes, that penetrates into the chest cavity. Nine double B. How many injuries do we see here? What type? Uh, double B is a picture of the mid back. We have stab wound 108, which penetrates into the chest cavity, and we have the additional wounds 106, 104, 96, 94, 92, 103, an additional unlabeled wound that's out of the field on the bottom. This is to the right side of the back. Wounds that penetrate into the chest cavity include 106 and 108, which are both shown here, and 103. And um, you say that the, um, 106, 103, 108 all enter the, the chest cavity. What was what type of um, effect did that have? Were these fatal wounds? Uh, yes, I'll take them one by one if that's okay. 103 enters the chest cavity, passes uh, through the cartilage of the fourth left costal vertebral joint, uh, and uh, it injures the, uh, that tissue and causes a pneumothorax. That particular wound does not penetrate into lung. Its approximate depth is two inches. 106 uh, penetrates through uh, the chest wall between the posterior third and fourth ribs. It enters the pleural cavity does not penetrate into the lung. It does cause, of course, pneumohemothorax, uh, and its total depth is approximately six centimeters. 108 penetrates into the back, penetrates between the fourth and fifth posterior ribs, and penetrates into the left upper lung lobe. This wound is longer. It is at least four inches in length. So that's 108 penetrating the lung, 103, 106, just penetrating the chest cavity. You used the, the phrase uh, pneumothorax or hemothorax. <clears throat> what is that? So when the chest cavity is penetrated, the normal occurring negative pressure that adheres the outside surface of the lung to the, the inside surface of the chest is lost. Air rushes into the chest cavity. So presumably, uh, the lung collapses, and uh, presumably that's why 103 and 106 do not penetrate into the uh, lung because it's already started to collapse. There's an air space there at that point. And, and in terms of when that type of injury occurs and that it begins to have that effect, um, how does that cause death and uh, how long does it take before a person dies? 
Sure. There is, of course, blood loss with any penetrating wound to the lungs, but the collapsing of the bilateral lungs in this case would cause a death by inability to breathe or suffocation, essentially, without uh, the negative pressure in the chest cavity allowing the diaphragm and the chest to work appropriately. The lungs cannot expand and draw in air. How long would it take for death to occur? Minutes. This would not be an instantaneous death? No, sir. Going to your stage nine, double C, what do we see here? Double C is an internal photograph. Here we have the left lung, note it has two lobes, and the left upper lung lobe has a large horizontally oriented uh, incised wound, stab wound, actually it's a stab wound, uh, part of the stab wound. Uh, looking carefully at the superior surface of this wound, we can see there's significant pleural hemorrhage. That is to say that the tissue of the lung was perfused with blood. There was a heartbeat when this occurred because we have deep soft tissue hemorrhage in the lung itself. Yes, the hemorrhagic appearance confirms that. Moving here, state nine, but, uh, DD. DD is the right side of the back. Uh, this is stab wound 100, and it is reapproximated by hands uh, and the numbers there. And then, importantly, on this wound, we see a hilt mark or a handle mark. There's a rectilinear abrasion to the right hand side. That represents the handle of the knife. Stab wound 100, it also penetrates into the chest cavity and the lung. And how deep was that wound? That wound measures four inches in depth. It penetrates through the third uh, intercostal space, penetrates into the right upper lobe or the right, uh, the upper lobe of the right lung and uh, creates an injury in the lung, also creating blood in that chest cavity and pneumothorax as well. We talked about evidence of a knife and the handle mark. <clears throat> yes. That would be an indication that the wound was pushed all the way through the body and the handle actually made an operation on the skin. Yes, the knife of the blade is completely inserted in picture or in wound 100. Moving to stage nine, double E. What injuries do we see here? We have uh, 102 and 103, and uh, I believe the remaining wounds are outside the kind of on the periphery. But the main purpose of this picture is to show 102 and 103. This is the um, hold on right side of the back. <coughs> Yes, right side of the back. And how deep did this one go? And when I say one or two, I guess I should specify. Yes, one or two is uh, 10 centimeters deep, approximately a little over uh, four inches, and we have wounding there into the <coughs> fourth intercostal space, the right upper lung lobe. This wound also shows a hilt mark the same uh, handle mark. Right here. Yes, sir. There's a rectilinear abrasion at the tip of the stab wound corresponding to the handle. Was this a fatal wound? Yes. Uh, 102 penetrates uh, deeply into the right upper lung lobe, causing hemorrhage and pneumothorax as well. So here we're on the right side of the back. We have 109, 110, and 111. 109 is a gaping stab wound, uh, and it does pass into the lung. 110 is a more superficial incised wound. And then 111, as I recall, is deep to soft tissue. And what does uh, 109, what is it? So one 109 penetrates between the seventh and eighth ribs and goes into the lower lobe of the right lung. The previous stab wounds went into the upper lobe, also causing hemorrhage and pneumothorax. <clears throat> and going to stage 9G, what is, what is this one? 
we're looking at the right side of the body, showing the penetration of uh, the wounds 109 and 102. Correct. The organs have been removed and we're looking at the pleural surface with the ribs and the intercostal muscles, the muscles between the ribs showing the stab wounds. Uh, importantly here on double G, the wound closest to midline does show subpleural hemorrhage indicating that the body was uh, perfused at the time. That blood should not be there, uh, of course, if it, was, if it has to be perfused. There has to be a heartbeat and a blood pressure for that blood to get there. Nine double H. This is the right lung. We're looking at the two stab wounds to the upper lobe from the top, really. This is like an apex down look at the lung. All right, so going to the section of photos of the right lower back and flank. Yes. Moving to states nine double I. Again, what section of the body is the kind of injury is what type? We have three stab wounds. Uh, numbered 112 to 114. They are approximately deep to fat subcutaneous tissue, a depth of about an inch, two to three centimeters. There's hemorrhage involved and associated with these wounds. None of these are fatal. I'm going to what you described as defensive injuries before moving to states nine double J. Um, you indicated before there were a total of I believe, 49 defensive injuries, is that right? Total all over both arms, yes. And that will be C, states 9, double J, double K, double L. I'll come back to the in a minute. Double M, double N, double O. Yes, sir. Nine penetrates the full thickness of the right hand and has a corresponding exit wound. So this wound nine, which is basically on the portion of the thumb here, penetrates through and pierces the palm. It's a through and through wound. And then again, nine double L, these um, there's a number of photograph of uh, number of injuries that are circled there. What was the significance of those injuries? Wounds two and three enter on the posterior aspect of the right hand. I'm sorry. The right hand passing between the bones of the hand and exiting the palm. So they're also through and through stab wounds of the hand. What would that indicate to you, the fact that apparently a knife or a sharp object penetrated the hand and went all the way through? Uh, obviously, there's a certain amount of force that's required to penetrate a human hand, uh, but it also is a fairly classic defensive injury to have full penetration of a hand by, by stab wound. Would it indicate in any way that the hand was um, against some type of hard or solid object? Uh, certainly could be. Uh, normally uh, we see these, uh, the, the decedent will place the hand between the assailant and their body. So the directionality here is from the back of the hand to the front, presumably the hand is between the central core of the body, which humans reflexively protect, and that's why we have the stab wound going that direction. Uh, states nine double T. Um, this is the right right arm. Is that correct? Yes, right wrist and forearm. Twelve wounds. Numbers fifty-five to sixty-one. We're looking at the palmar surface with multiple stab wounds in the palm and then additional sharp force injuries, uh, mostly stab wounds on the right wrist and forearm. And in this particular photograph, you can actually see the other side of those injuries that went all the way yep, to the right. Yep, that's correct. Nine double Q. 
nine double Q, we have uh, additional injuries. Uh, we've seen photographs of many of these, but we have 62 and 64, which are on the right arm. Uh, yes, uh, because the wounds basically go from the palm, well, the back of the hand, all the way down to the elbow, and there's a large number of them on multiple surfaces, multiple photographs must be taken to capture them all. Same for double, double S. Yes, here we're seeing wounds 69 to 71. Uh, 70 and 71 are superficial incised wounds, where the others are uh, stab wounds, much like we've seen before. Soft tissue wounding. Right. And then there were also sharp work injuries to the left arm, is that correct? Correct. Here we have illustrated on the upper left arm wounds 45 and 46. Stakes 9W. These are the uh, wounds to the left forearm, eight wounds. Uh, the ones illustrated in this photo are 47, 48, 50, 52, and 54. Uh, one can see there are fewer stab wounds on the left arm than the right. This is 49, which is uh, the only wound uh, on this side of the arm. So it has a separate photo. WW shows a gaping uh, incised wound of the lateral aspect of the arm on the ulnar surface extending across the wrist on a horizontal plane. That's nearby the wound we previously described. That's wound 53. It's a uh, stab wound, superficial wounding there. Dr. Pochi indicated that the end defensive injuries that um, she was warding off these stabs. Um, would that be evidence that um, Tristan Bailey, would that be consistent with her conscious aware of her attack and fighting for her life? Yes. Would these injuries have been painful? Yes. Hello, ma'am. I don't have a, a lot of questions for you today. But no problem. In terms of, so you took over this case and you were not the original medical examiner. That is correct, yes, ma'am. Dr. Bulick actually did the report. Yes. You reviewed the report and you reviewed the photos. Yes, ma'am. Um, and you were not present on May 10th for the actual autopsy. No, ma'am, I was not. You did not go to the scene. No, ma'am. And. You weren't involved with the actual collection of, for example, any um, DNA or the fragment? No, ma'am, I was not. So in terms of the blood loss, is it fair to say that on view, we didn't look at all of the organs, but on view of the paleness of the kidneys, that there's a lot of blood loss? Yes, and the lungs. We do have a picture of the lungs. Uh, they're quite pale. And so same with the liver, same with the lungs, that there's a significant amount of blood loss? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, and I understand that you've indicated that the heart was still beating at the time of these injuries. Yes, the, the hemorrhagic appearance of the stab wounds to the lungs certainly requires uh, a heartbeat at the time. So yes, we would not have the hemorrhagic appearance of the stab wounds. These are anti-mortem injuries to the lungs. And with that in mind then, because you're seeing significant blood loss, is it also fair to say with this large amount of blood loss that there's loss of consciousness? There can be, but it, it would not be instant for sure. Right. It, versus, for example, the single gunshot wound to the head. There's certain gunshot wounds that are instant. Of course, yes. This but when is you're, not instant. Right. But when you're seeing this much blood loss, it would lead to loss of consciousness also. Yes, eventually, yes, ma'am. Even though the heart's still beating. Uh, yes, you would lose consciousness most likely bef uh, before uh, cessation of heartbeat, yes. And then in terms of the... I'm going to try this word. Pneumothorax. Pneumothorax. Right. There were two of them. Yes, both sides. On both right sides. and left. Go ahead. I'm just going to say they would have collapsed the lungs. And that would lead to loss of life. Yes. All right. And is it fair to say because you have both of these pneumothorax 
meaning one on each lung, that this collection or even the cluster of injuries would promote the loss of life in a faster time space? Faster, but certainly still not instantaneous. Right, again, the distinction being the, the gunshot wound to the head. Right. All right. So in this particular instance, then, is it fair to say that you didn't see any healing of any of these injuries? Oh, no, none of these injuries would have been healing, no. Right, so this, didn't, this isn't a, a type of, um, this 114 didn't take a course of hours or days. Oh, no, this all happens relatively quickly. Yes, ma'am. All wounds on the body show a appearance that is acute. There's no healing at, at any any anywhere, anywhere on the body. Thank you very much, Doctor. You're free to go. You want to take a break now for we'll just take a ten minute recess and I'll let you if you can uh, remove that TV as well. Uh-huh. <laughs>